High-tech bionic eyes may sound like science fiction, but they're a real technology that's helping blind people see again. I'll break down how bionic eyes are already transforming people's lives and their mind-blowing potential future applications. But first of all, what is a bionic eye? These are electrical implants that are surgically inserted into someone's eye or brain, usually to restore vision in people with serious visual impairments or blindness. They're not a miracle cure that gives you perfect vision though. More on that later. Unlike traditional glasses or contact lenses that change the power of your eyes to correct for vision errors, bionic eyes bypass damaged parts of the eye. They electronically stimulate parts of the visual system that still work, like functional cells on your retinas or the visual cortex of someone's brain. Bionic eyes usually consist of an external camera, often mounted on glasses, a transmitter that turns the images from the camera into wireless signals, and electrodes implanted into the person's retina or visual cortex, sending visual signals to their brain. Pretty crazy, right? Now let's talk about the kinds of eye condition these things treat, and then I'll talk about the current state of bionic eye technology and specific examples of real devices. Retinitis pigmentosa, or RP, is a genetic eye disorder that damages light-sensitive photodetector cells in your retina, which are the things that actually detect light and convert it into electrical signals that your brain can understand. RP can make you lose parts of your vision, have extra trouble seeing at night, and even go completely blind. Another disease that damages your retina is age-related macular degeneration, or AMD. This damages your macula, which is the center of your retina, causing the center of your vision to blur and disappear. Other conditions can damage your optic nerve, which is what carries signals from your retinas to your brain. Now let's talk about the current state of bionic eyes. They don't give you perfect vision, as if a patient is seeing exactly what the camera is seeing. It's tricky to convert digital images into signals that make sense to your brain. Bionic eyes help patients perceive light, general shapes, and movement, but they don't let them see detailed images or color. Retinal implants have electrodes attached directly to the retinas in your eyes. And now let's talk about some specific examples of those. The Argus 2 by Second Sight transfers images captured by a glasses-mounted camera to 60 electrodes on the patient's retina. This is a video of Larry Hester, a retinitis pigmentosa patient who hadn't been able to see at all for 33 years until getting this. While the device still only lets Larry perceive a general shape of what's around him and seeing light and darkness, it was a crazy big improvement and let him get around the world a lot easier. The Argus 2 was the first FDA-approved retinal implant in 2013, but it was unfortunately discontinued in 2020 after the company Second Sight closed down. But there are other options. The BVA system by Bionic Vision Australia is an experimental bionic eye designed to improve biocompatibility and long-term stability. It uses an array of electrodes placed between the retina and the choroid, the layer of blood vessels between the retina and the white part of your eye. The BVA system is designed to improve contrast sensitivity, letting patients better distinguish between light and dark areas. Early trials showed that users could detect flashes of light, but more research is needed before this thing is widely commercially available. But there's another type of bionic eye besides retinal implants called cortical implants that bypass the eye completely and connect straight to your brain. A device called the Generis Bionic Vision System by the Menashe Vision Group in Australia is a direct brain implant with 11 electrodes that stimulate the visual cortex instead of the retina. It's designed for people who are completely blind, like people with optic nerve damage. It works a lot like Argus 2, with an external camera on headgear converting images into brain-stimulating electrical signals. Animal studies with sheep proved super successful, and right now they're going through clinical human trials in Melbourne, Australia. Like the other devices we talked about, it gives users low-resolution grayscale vision. 
This represents a super promising direction for restoring vision to people though, who can't benefit from retinal implants because their retinas just don't work at all. So bionic eye technology exists, but it's super expensive and or just not widely available at all. But what could the future of this kind of cool tech look like? First of all, the biggest change that's needed is just having this technology become FDA approved, more widely available and cheaper. But let's talk about the specific technological improvements that researchers are working on. A higher electro density can give these things higher resolution, adaptive AI processing can improve image recognition, and stimulating multiple types of retinal cells can give this technology color vision. Fully wireless and more compact systems could also result in standalone artificial eyes without the whole glasses or head mounted situation going on. Brain interfaces like Neuralink could also potentially create vision feeds straight into the brain. The concept of electronics just directly implanted in your brain like that freaks me out a little bit, but it kind of seems like the direction a lot of technology is headed. And these future ideas of where this technology could go are super exciting, but they open up some interesting questions. Like, what if this artificial bionic eye technology becomes better than human vision? Would people who don't have visual impairments start using this kind of augmentation? And what does that really mean about what it means to be human when we're enhancing ourselves in these kinds of crazy artificial ways? That's a whole rabbit hole, but what do you think of these kinds of things? And are there any other eye-related topics you'd like me to talk about? If so, please leave a comment. Thanks.